Hare Krishna, welcome to Bhakti Sangha Japa Conference Call. Today's speaker is His Grace Ram Girdhari Prabhuji. Prabhuji will speak on the topic of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Leela, Chapter 23, Words, Specific One Words. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, are you present on the call? Hare Krishna, yes, I am present. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you so much Prabhuji, Danvat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Guru Maharaj, thank you so much for giving your valuable time and association to us this morning and enlightening us on this topic. I now hand over the call to you Prabhuji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, so I am slightly struggling regarding the go live of the YouTube, I'm not sure if... Um, it's giving right so just give me a minute I will uh, you know yes okay Prabhuji. you can take over Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chanda Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda so, we are reading from Chaitanya Jaitamata, Madhya Lila, chapter 23, text number 66 and 67 today. So, I will read the word 66. Vrajendra Nandana Krishna Nayaka Shiromani Narikara Shiromani Radha Thakurani Translation, Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who appeared as the son of Nanda Maharaj is the supreme hero in all dealing. Similarly, Srimati Radharani is the topmost heroine in all dealing. Text 67 Nayaka nam shiro ratnam krishna subham svayam yadra nitya saya sarve vira jante mahagunam Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God Himself and He is the crown jewel of all heroes. In Krishna, all transcendental good qualities are permanently situated. Purpose. This verse is also found in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 2.1.17. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Yananjana Shalakaya Chakshuram Nilitam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namaham Vishnu Padaya Krishna Presha Ayabhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Vinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvi Presha Asunyavadi Pachasya Deshatarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we are reading from Chaitanya Chaitanya Madhya we are uh, discussing text 66 and 67 of the 23rd chapter of Madhya So, this was a conversation happening between Sri Jaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sanatana Goswami. As a part of this discussion where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is discussing about some very 
these transcendental subjects. He is describing about your devotional service and different components of your devotional service. So we have been hearing about so many details based on um, the conversation between Sanatana Goswami and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sripad Rupa Goswami, as well as Sanatana Goswami has given a lot of more purports and details in their own words, where Bhaktira Samrita Sindhu, Rukhat Bhagavata Amrita, and various such literary work gives about the details and descriptions of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings to these Goswamis. Generally, when you talk about a sutra, or when you talk about a shastra, every shastra is based on an underlying sutra, a seed. So if, if you talk about a Purana, if you talk about a, a, a particular Vedic literature, the Vedic literature is driven to uh, drive home a particular seed for which that literature was compiled. Of all the Puranas, Srimad Bhagavatam is considered as Amala Puran. Amala Puran means that which does not have any anomalies or that which is absolutely pure. And it is said that there are 100 and close to 140 plus commentaries of Srimad Bhagavatam given to different different scholars. Finally, it's kind of one of the highly commented Purana probably. So, Srimad Bhagavatam's Bija Mantra, Paribhasha Sutra of Srimad Bhagavatam is called Ete Chansa Kala Punsam Krishnatsu Bhagavan Swayam. Ete Chansa Kala Punsam Krishnatsu Bhagavan Swayam Indra Vyakula Slokam. So, Vyakudev and every personality who has come and commented on Srimad Bhagavatam, they are trying to drive home this seed, which is to establish Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So the Paribhati Sutra of Srimad Bhagavatam, the word is Rete Jansa Kala Pumsam. So Mahaprabhu is now explaining about Krishna's supremacy, Krishna's transcendental nature, Krishna's superlative position is going on to explain how Krishna is heroes of all the heroes. How Krishna possesses all the superlatively wonderful qualities. The reason Mahaprabhu is explaining about the Supreme Lord I mean, he has been explaining multiple times, but he is explaining further because the next few verses later he is going to explain about something more higher or something more deeper, something more special in connection with Krishna. It is about Srimati Radharani. So in our discussion today, we will try to analyze or we will try to discuss these two verses, 66 and 67 of Madhavila, chapter 23, which is also our basis of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Because Krishna Consciousness Movement is to develop Krishna Consciousness and also to understand the supreme nature of the Lord. 
as explained by Mahaprabhu, Krishna is the crown jewel of all the heroes. In Krishna, all transcendental qualities are permanently situated. That's what he is concluding. Now let us look at this. Of course, Mahaprabhu has stated it. Krishna's position is established. We, as practitioners, we need to understand how do we connect to this verse in our practice of Krishna consciousness. So as a part of turning these two verses, we will have some set of reflections and through those reflections, let's try to see if we can drive home some message for all of us. Right from the day one of our coming into Krishna consciousness, we would have heard many, many classes and many a times heard this point of how Krishna is Supreme Personality of Godhead. In this explanation of Krishna is Supreme Personality of Godhead, after a point in time, probably we wanted to hear more we wanted to learn more and what are interested in more details about the spiritual concept at this core point of Krishna Supreme Person of God is kind of sidelined or overlooked or somewhere it is given not so important privilege may not be voluntarily, but subconsciously. So we are going to have three sets of reflections to help us meditate on these two verses. Janma karma chane divyam evam yogeti tattvataha Tektva deham punar janma naiti maame Tiso Arjuna It is said that this verse explains about what happens when we know about Krishna. There is one more verse which is also telling what happens when we know about Krishna. It is Anushyana Sahatreshu Sakyat Yadadi Siddhaye so these two verses, one talks about anyone who knows about Krishna's transcendental appearance and activity. Janma karma cha me divyam. The word says, punar janma naiti. That person need not take birth again. Another word saying, to know that is the rarest of the rarest opportunity. So there are two perspectives. One is to know it very rare. Even if you know about Krishna's supreme position, for us to live in that consciousness is all the more rare. And what it actually means is if somebody could do that, they don't need to come back again. And this opportunity is not easily available for that we have to wait for many, many lifetimes. Bahunam, Janmanam, Ante, Jnanavan, Ma Prapatyate, Vasudeva Sarvamiti, Sa Mahatma, Sudurlava. So three points. Number one, anyone who is knowing know about Krishna, his transcendental appearance, his transcendental activities, his transcendent relationship with Vaishnavas is very rare. And anyone who is talking about being Krishna conscious, 
not necessarily he can make it to Krishna. Because out of many, many people who talk about Krishna, hardly anyone, a few go to Krishna. And third, this opportunity is available after many, many lifetimes. With these three perspectives, with these three understandings, our reflections are going to unveil. So the first reflection is about how when we know about Krishna as Supreme Personality of Godhead, how is our progression in consciousness happen and what is the ultimate phase to be in? So I would classify our stages of consciousness into four folders. So I will classify our progression of consciousness, our development of consciousness, our attraction towards the Supreme Lord in four stages. Stage number one is to know that Krishna is Supreme Personality of God. One devotee very nicely explained to me where when somebody is Krishna conscious, it is the rarest opportunity because 99% of the people in this world they think God don't exist. Hardly 1% or 2% or very less person believe in existence of God and those who believe in the existence of God does not believe in the form of God. And those who believe in the form of God are very, very less and they think any form of God is okay to be attached to God. Hardly very few percent of people realize that Krishna is Supreme Personality of Godhead. So to come to the state of even knowing Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead is a very rarest opportunity that is highly appreciated and we are very fortunate to be in that position. But what should be the next natural progression that we should be in? So as soon as we know Krishna is Supreme Lord, he is our father, he is always interested in loving, giving, whatever we need. He provides what we need. He protects what we have. Ananya chintayanto ma ejana pradyupasate tesha mithyabhyuktanam yogakshemam bahamyam. So Krishna is already showing his inclination. My dear friend, I will try to protect what you have. I will try to provide what you lack when you surrender unto me. So when Krishna is ready like that, what is the natural stage that we move forward? What is the natural stage that we are interested is what we can get from Krishna. So the stage two, which most of us or even anybody who is devotional, who are trying to do is to worship Krishna, to worship God, to surrender to God, to become spiritual so that we can ask for our needs. So knowing Krishna and asking for our needs are definitely, you know, positive in terms of being devotional rather than being an atheist. But just surrendering to Krishna and asking Him to provide for our needs is still considered as something not pure. 
Like every time when we pray to Krishna, every time when we stand in front of Krishna, every time when we worship Krishna, the reason why we worship, pay, glorify Krishna is they follow the stage two, is to just ask. Bhagavatam says because it's not wrong. But Chaitanya Jaitanya is taking us one level above about which we are talking. What Bhagavatam says? Akama, Sarva Kama, Moksha Kama Vamudharati, Tivrena, Bhakti Yogena, Yajesa, Purusham Param. When you have no desires, when you have all desires, when you have desire for liberation, if somebody performs Bhakti Yoga, they are properly situated, agreed, sir. So from that perspective, from knowing Krishna to worshipping Krishna is the second stage, which is good. I worship Krishna because I have some desire. I ask Krishna because I know that He loves me. I am dependent on Krishna because Krishna is ready to provide what I need. So from just knowing, which is a jnani, just knowing, which is just technically correct, to worshipping, to praying, to offering obeisances, to giving him whatever, I mean, to surrendering unto him for needing of our things is good. Is the second natural progression of our consciousness. I always jokingly say that many a times we have become Krishna conscious, but the level of Krishna conscious that we are in is such that we are interested in using Krishna for us. When we stand in front of Krishna, we just think, what do I ask? How much do I ask? How pleadingly I ask? So that what do we need, He provides. Tera mujko arpan. In Hindi, a very famous song where it says that Mera tujko arpan. All that belongs to me, all that are with me, I am trying to offer it to you. Instead of that, these sadhakas, out of difficulties, out of challenges, out of whatever conditions, we are saying, I am ready to take whatever you provide and please provide me and please give me shelter and take care of me. So the stage two is worshipping and demanding and seeking the Lord to provide for our needs. The stage three is because we are worshipping Krishna, because we are surrendered to Krishna, we are definitely bestowed. We are certainly, you know, definitely we have an experience where Krishna has reciprocated or Krishna is definitely reciprocating. So we definitely become indebted. So as a matter of our indebtedness to Krishna, we are now ready to serve Krishna in addition to asking from Him. So consciousness development, you see, first I knew Krishna as Supreme Lord. Then I demanded or, you know, depended on Krishna for my needs and hence I used them so that I get what I wanted. And because Krishna started to provide me I am now developing some more faith and ready to also to serve the Lord because He provided. The third stage is a stage which very much all Satakas who are practicing are in. Where we serve the Lord as well as we ask from the Lord. We serve the Lord as well as we demand from the Lord. We serve the Lord as well as we keep praying, what do I get from the Lord? There is one more stage. This is what is being spoken all the while when we discuss about Bhava Bhakti and Prema Bhakti. And that stage is called a stage of stop asking from the Lord and just serving the Lord in the sense of giving pleasure to the Lord. How many of us are 
thinking or serving or that you know taking darshan to give pleasure to krishna the moment we think giving pleasure to krishna we start to think that i am not eligible it is not about our eligibility it is about krishna's preference krishna likes to be with us krishna wants us to be with him krishna wants us to serve him krishna wants us to see we are engaged in his service so krishna is eager and knowing that we should do that then krishna is pleased so the stage 4 is a stage where we please the lord we are serving only to please the lord and withdraw our thoughts from the equation so this conversation that we are having about krishna's supremacy is complete understanding about krishna's transcendental qualities is complete knowing that krishna is the possessor of all the transcendental qualities and is a super hero is complete only when we give ourselves to him and please him and try to make it as our goal without any personal attachment and personal motives so my first reflection is about these four stages of evolution of consciousness where we may have come to stage 3 and the stage 3 to stage 4 wherein i am serving krishna as well as trying to expect from krishna something in return i need to develop my consciousness i need to develop a mood i need to come to a stage where i don't want to demand anything from krishna i just only want to serve him and please him that is the eighth shloka of that you know jaitanya diksha shikshakta what is the mood the mood is that the lord give me does not give me come in front of me does not come in front of me he is my worshipful lord i am here to serve him please him we had always discussed this very famous conversation between pralad maharaj and narsingh dev when narsingh dev made a deal offer to pralad maharaj what was his offer my dear pralad i am pleased with you please ask me what you need i want to give you something pralad maharaj says my dear sir i don't want anything from you the second name narsingh dev is asking please pralad i would like to give you something what was pralad response my dear sir my dear prabhu my dear master you need not prove you are my master just by giving whether you give or not give you are still my worshipable lord whether you provide or not provide you are still my worshipable lord and the more you give the more i get carried away and get just just get digressed and leave your association so better you won't allure me with all your offers i will still continue to remain your servant and student if you still want to give me something please give me a simple benediction which is edidasya sine kama varam sambara darshava kamanam hriya samrohaṁ bhavatas subrane varam He says, "If you still want to give me something, you please give me this boon. What is the boon? Ama Ram, Vidya Chandra Ram. My heart is filled with lust, greed, anger, envy, ego, pride, illusion. Ama Ram, Vidya Chandra Ram. My heart is filled with some nonsense. So please help me to get it out of this monster. Because that is stopping me in." worshiping you and giving pleasure to you so the first reflection i would like to say the stage that we are expected to be in as students of jaitanya charitamrita as a student of bhakti yoga process is to somehow slowly 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 but firmly and focusedly withdraw our desires our goals our achievements our needs and just function is the only spirit of pleasing glorifying serving 
Krishna. My goal is to please Krishna and no other agenda. If Krishna is pleased, then everything else that you may be interested in demanding will automatically come to your place. That is Siddhartha. And even if it is not provided, maybe that is what the Lord is wishing. So in either case, I am not at loss. That's the kind of understanding the change. So when we are reading Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is encouraging us to talk about Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God, possessor of all transcendental qualities, one of the transcendental qualities of Krishna is he can remove all the doggish mentality from our heart to the surrendered soul. That is what Dilla Mangala Thakura is singing in his Chorakshikam. Braje Prasiddham Navanita Choram Gopangana Namsha Dupula Choram huh? He's saying you are a thief. Coming and taking away all the accumulated unwanted sins in our heart Coming and stealing them away. So please, continue to steal whatever you have, but for whatever you are stealing, I am going to punish you, and as a thief, I am going to lock you up in the jail of my heart for aeons. So the point here is that how do we develop our consciousness from the stage of knowing Krishna to the stage of loving Krishna? From the state of just knowing, we definitely started to asking and worshipping. From the state of worshipping, we come to the state of servicing. From the state of servicing Krishna, we come to the state of loving Krishna. And when you say loving Krishna means no other personal agenda, just love Krishna and not ask anything. And the more you come to that stage, Krishna will Keep watching how steady are we in that stage. The moment he realizes we are steady, he will give himself to us. And that's when prema bhakti, that's when the deeper love that is being spoken, that we are discussing for last few weeks, will manifest. Till the point in time where we say that I don't want anything from you, Krishna. I am not going to use you. I am not interested in getting anything from you. Whatever you give, whether it is pain or pleasure, that's fine. That stage is what the stage is of gopis, great Mahajanas. Because they are not asking, even when gopis are asking Krishna, why have you gone? Where have you gone? Why have you left us like this? They are suffering without your association. Their agenda taking Krishna's association is not for their needs. Their agenda of association with Krishna was to give Krishna pleasure, to give Krishna love, to just love Krishna. They said, we don't want anything else. That is why a devotee chooses Krishna over Krishna. Because Arjuna and Duryodhana were given a choice. And Arjuna chose Krishna to be with them, whereas Duryodhana thought Krishna's army will be helpful to me. So hence my first reflection is that somehow or other we need to develop our consciousness in such a way that we come to the stage of at least understand that we should definitely at some point in time come to the stage of loving Krishna and giving pleasure to Krishna. That is why we encourage all the devotees, when we go to temple, when we go to yatra, when we go to different satsangas, more than seeing what do I get, definitely which we should you know, keep introspecting and try to learn something for us. But we should also try to contribute to please the Supreme Lord, to please the spiritual master, to please Vaishnavas in such a way that our agenda is only to serve them. The more we withdraw ourselves, the more our heart is going to get cleansed. So reflection number two. When we say Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God, when we say that I will love Krishna, in our regular context, in our day-to-day context, where do I, how do I go about in doing that? 
Because I need to show my love to Krishna. I agree, Prabhuji, that we need to show our love to Krishna. How do we do that? We do that in the form of doing an attentive chanting. We do that in the form of seeing we do that from the perspective of showing our love to Krishna. We do that from the perspective of showing how we need to glorify the Supreme Lord. How we need to glorify the Supreme Lord by glorifying His holy name. Looking at how Krishna's holy name Krishna's Prasadam, Krishna's Bhagavatam, all of them are trying to help us to remember Krishna. So the second reflection is, if at all I need to show my love towards Krishna, I need to show love towards Krishna's holy name. If I want to show love towards Krishna, I need to show love towards Krishna's devotees. If I want to, if I have developed love towards Krishna, I need to show love towards Srimad Bhagavatam and Krishna's pastimes. If I want to go love to love towards Krishna and to show love towards Krishna's deity and show love to love to Krishna's holy dham. So when I say love towards all of them, I am loving them without any expectation and I am loving them in a capacity where I am indebted to them and I don't need anything in return. So when we don't need anything in return, that's when this whole Krishna consciousness journey is going to develop. If we expect anything in return, we are still in an adulted state. But when we don't expect anything in return, and if we are focused and firm on that point, Krishna, at some point in time, going to reciprocate by saying, I am yours. There is a very famous story which I have shared before but for the sake of repetition and you know, to the context remember it again. This was about Kolavetya Sridhar's past time where Kolavetya Sridhar met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told my dear Sridhara I am very happy and pleased with you Thank you so much for all your love. Because Kola Vecha Sridhar has been regularly providing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with bananas. So he is a banana vendor and every day before he goes out the cell he used to go to Mahaprabhu's house and give a first lot to Jaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nimai. He's a very poor fellow and does not have a very sophisticated lifestyle. So in spite of that, he never stopped his offering to Krishna, Jaitanya Mahaprabhu. And one day Mahaprabhu said, I am very much pleased with you. Please ask me, what do you want in return for the love that you gave? So Sridhar said, my dear Mahaprabhu, I don't need anything. I am fine, fine, whatever the arrangements that are there for me. But Mahaprabhu said, please ask. I would like to give you something. Whatever the Sridhar said, I do not want anything. And third time when Mahaprabhu insisted, and this time Mahaprabhu was very, very firm. You need to ask me something. I would like to give you something. Please ask. Kolavati Shrikal said that, please bestow me with a benediction. The way that I am serving you, this banana has everyday service to you, life after life, allow me to serve you and express my love towards you every life that I am going to take. I don't want anything else from you, my dear Lord. Mahaprabhu was so much pleased with the mood of Sridhara, he gave a tight hug to follow with the Sridhar and said, from today onwards, I am yours. So the message here is, 
if we are loving Krishna, or if we are intending to show our love to Krishna, we should begin by focusing our activities in our japa. So we show our love in japa because knowing that japa and Krishna are not different. Holy name and Krishna are not different. Taking care of the deities, because what happens is that one, on one side, we are agreeing that I need to love Krishna, or at least to an extent, understanding that I need to love Krishna. And in terms of application, it comes, we are inattentive in our chanting, we are disrespectful in front of deities, we are disrespectful to devotees who are not so much careful in devotees' association. When we go to Dham, we try to see Dham as a sightseeing place. When we, when we reach Srimad Bhagavatam, we read them with only technical interest. So with this approach, when we deal with any one of Krishna in another form, then we will not be able to develop love for Krishna. Because if you need Krishna to come in front of you and stand, Prabhuji, if Krishna stands in front of me, I will, I will definitely express my love, no personal agenda. You have Krishna, holy name. The moment we can, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna is there. We are not able to see experience. It is not any of the problem. It is our problem. But Krishna is there. In detail, Krishna is there. Our deities and Krishna are identical. So many past times. Sakshi Gopal, you know, uh, Raghunandan Das Paku, so many past times. How deities are Krishna themselves. Srimad Bhagavatam, Sanatana Gosam again. Sri Krishna Parivartita. So Srimad Bhagavatam is Krishna Prasami Pai. In fact, it is very nice to explain how 12 candles of Srimad Bhagavatam refers to different parts of Krishna's body. Holy Dham, so the second reflection that I want to share here is when we are talking about Krishna's transcendental position, when we talk about Krishna's superlative nature, when we talk about Krishna's uh, being the hero of all the heroes, what is our duty is to start developing love and see Krishna in our lives in different aspects. We need to learn to see Krishna in our lives in different, different aspects, if we don't get to see Krishna in different aspects, then we are the losers, we fail big time. So let us learn to see Krishna in our lives. That way, we will be able to make progress to the stage of loving Krishna. The last reflection is about different stages of recognizing Krishna in our lives. So, this is just to think, this is just to help us. Sometimes we may have Krishna around us and we will miss him. And as a part of this third reflection, we will also quickly talk about the reasons why we are not able to recognize. So, my humble reflection here is that as Kanishka or as beginners, we definitely able to understand Krishna in the deity form in the temple. But when we start slowly hearing about Krishna Katha, when we start slowly hearing about um, Bhagavad Gita class and attending some Bhakti Griksha programs, we start to slowly understand and accept Krishna sitting as Paramatma in everybody's heart. And when we start further discussing, as we just discussed two minutes before, we start to accept holy name also as Krishna. Initially we don't see that, we differentiate holy name as the opportunity to see Krishna. But as we hear more, as we associate more, we see holy name as Krishna. If you practice more and more seriously, we develop a sense that all the objects that exist, all the things that exist, all the people that exist, they are Krishna. 
and if we surrender more we come to a stage that even the challenges that are coming our way are also krishna so the point i want to say here is that i know i had come to the stage of loving krishna i know that for us to love krishna i need to recognize krishna so in the form of holy name in the form of shrimad bhagavatam in the form of deity in the form of dham in the form of vaishnava i need to start loving them to eventually love krishna because they are krishna and they are krishna personification and to do that let's even recognize krishna in our life even in the form of a challenge for practicing devotees even a challenge is krishna in our life buddhi manne ka krishna in every challenge or he she said that whenever i have a challenge krishna will be here pandava did not differentiate a challenge when krishna is present because he always knew that krishna is always with me whenever we are difficult with krishna appear so there is not any problem so as practicing devotees one of the ways by which we will be able to develop love for krishna is to acknowledge krishna is not just in the temple krishna is just not in the hearts of jiva krishna is not just holy name krishna is not even just all the objects that are exist even the challenges that we say even the so called apparent disturbances even the apparent so called pain is also given to us if we are surrendered to krishna if we are sincere to krishna and if still we face challenges and challenges are also krishna so hence let's learn to accept them and move forward in being focused in love with krishna but they are not able to do that because of two things number 1 aho dukham maha dukham dukha आचार संदेशमृत रत्न हरे नाम रीजन वाई वी आर नॉट एवं रेकग्नाइज कृष्णा एंड लव इन इज बिकॉज काचार संस्मृत रत्न बिकॉज ऑफ आर मटेरियल एजुकेशन because of hearing from a relative source and not hearing from an absolute source we accept reality as an illusion and illusion as reality the second reason is somewhere we are selfish so long as selfishness is there in our heart we will continue to remain narrow minded and so long as narrow mindedness is there for us to love unconditionally becomes very difficult so the two points number one accepting hearing from a relative source about the lord about spirituality about various things makes us accept illusion as reality and reality as illusion in the vaishnava ke is very nice extend the bhakti siddhanta sarasvati jato that if you are not serious about support your internal krishna consciousness you may accept truth as illusion and illusion as truth so the point is that because of hearing from a relative source not hearing from an absolute source we have this problem may be material education may be even spiritual education it is extremely important that we learn to hear from an absolute source the second aspect why we are not able to recognize krishna is because of our extended attachment towards us and being selfish selfishness that i need to make a progress i should somehow get krishna i should be more and more in advance devotees we need to be importantly focusing on the coming out of our uh, 
anartha but that doesn't mean that i only should go and being selfish of what do i get rather than what do i give to make us remain a narrow minded devotee and so long as the selfishness is there we will not be able to love krishna because the selfishness will blind us even to recognize krishna as then serving him and offering him we will be demanding and asking from him so these three reflections are to share the context where krishna being supreme personality of god and krishna being the master of all the all that exists krishna who is supremely hero in all his de- dealing our duty is to somehow acknowledge that and eventually get to the stage of loving so long as we get to the stage of loving him so long as we come to the stage of giving all of us to him we will always be doing trade or transaction with him in demanding so we will still have an adulterous situation rather than pure situation but this context this whole chapter is talking about purity in devotion and perfection in devotion and to get perfection in devotion we should withdraw ourselves from the scene so to summarize our conversation we had three sets of reflection before we discuss this reflection we shared how janma karma jane divyam which is krishna's knowing krishna's transcendental appearance transcendental quality transcendental nature will take us away from the material world and we never be able to we never be not we need not come back again to the material world and also how krishna says that there is a very rare opportunity even if somebody is in that path not everybody makes it even if somebody makes it they come to the stage after many many lifetimes bahu naam janma naam and they so we are practicing devotees we are at least to be very confidently say that we are in the right track are we in the right stage each one of us are answer that we are on the right track we are moving forward we need to make sure that as we move forward we does not get carried away and just stay put and as a part of that these verses from chaitanya charitamrita should help us to reflect and go back to the ground reality how much krishna means to me or how much i love the supreme lord so on that basis we have three sets of reflections reflection number 1 is about how our consciousness is you know gradually need to be developing so from the stage of knowing krishna being the supreme personal of god at to the stage of worshiping krishna to be the supreme person of god at the stage of serving krishna to be the supreme person of god at the final stage of loving krishna as supreme person of god at so we are somehow or other managed to come to the stage of serving but along with the serving we still have an alteration of asking needing something for us as he said this is not this is not wrong nothing is abominable over here but when we are talking about pure spirit souls pure position and to be in the transcendental stage we need to come to the stage of absolutely loving krishna without any personal motives so to do that we need to start recognizing krishna that is the second reflection where we start the holy name understand holy name as krishna understand shrimad bhagavatam as krishna and that then deities are krishna dham and vaishnava all of them are krishna and gives us access to krishna hence if we start loving them if we start respecting them if we start making sure not to demand rather to give ourselves to them then our love towards krishna will increase more and more and finally the third reflection was that rather than just looking at krishna in the temple looking at krishna in the deity krishna in the jiva krishna even in holy name we need to also come to the platform that sometimes in this process of journey of krishna consciousness krishna may come in the form of challenges as well krishna may come in the form of pain krishna may come in the form of some austerity that we need to perform so that we go to the next higher stage to come to this stage 
is really, you know, a great accomplishment for him to go for the last few miles so that we get to the eternal zone of being with Krishna in the spiritual abode. In the project management, they always say this, 80 percent of the job gets done in 20 percent of the time. The remaining 20 percent of the job takes the remaining 80 percent of the time. So all of us as students of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, we have done 80 percent of our job, hopefully Krishna willing, where we are practicing nicely, hearing, serving, so many things are happening. Great. But the remaining 20 percent is where the challenge is. I end with a small point which I always make is about Draupati's Vastra Haran. When Draupati wanted to raise and surrender, she was always conscious that what if somebody is not going to come and help us? She asked for help from everybody. She raised one of her hands up. She asked her grandfather, all the uncles, all the husband, ask everybody in the assembly, please help. And she even raised her hand and said, My dear Lord, please help. But she had kept one of her hands holding to herself. At that time, Krishna was playing dice in Dwaraka along with Satyabhama. Satyabhama asked, I'm not sure if it's Kuniya Satyabhama, she asked, My dear Prabhu, your devotee is in trouble. When will you go on help? This is the time you should go on help. Krishna told that don't worry. She just now has raised one hand up. Let us play one more game. Krishna was playing dice with her. Let's play one more game. By the time she will raise her, her next hand also. At that time, I will go on rescue. So the moment, the situation, the mindset between raising the first hand to the second hand is a stage of moving from serving the Lord to loving the Lord. Because we, for us to love the Lord, we have to give ourselves fully with no strings attached. For us to serve Krishna, we have only give portion of us. So the, cha- the challenge is between how to give ourselves completely, is always how to give a portion of us. To put it, to make Krishna consciousness as a part of life, we have achieved. We have to make Krishna consciousness as a way of life. For that, we need to stay put and make sure that somehow or other we come out of the selfishness mentality as well as come out of the propensity to hear from an abs- uh, relative source and start hearing from an absolute source wherein we will start connecting the dots together that Krishna is unwilling and eventually we will make it to the spiritual abode. Thank you very much. Shri Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki Jai. Shri La Prabhupada Ki Jai. Is there any questions or comments you can discuss? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Any questions or comments? Krishna Prabhu Ji. Very, very beautiful class, Prabhu Ji. Thank you so much for so many examples. Thank you so much, Prabhuji, for so many examples and very detailed explanation. It was so nice, and at the end, your summary was so beautiful. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Hare Krishna. How was so about? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Thank you so much for the very, very, especially about uh, Krishna, seeing Krishna in difficulties. I thought that was very, very important for us at this point in time in sadhana so thank, thank you, you so much. thank you anybody else has any other questions or comments i'm not sure if the youtube stream works because i i think uh, there's, there's some trouble i'm seeing here uh, yeah so i know yeah actually it stopped uh, halfway through yeah i mean it's it's doing a, a live over here, but I don't think it's streaming because uh, something went wrong while mm-hmm. Okay, okay. That's okay, Prabhu. I think it's... Thank you, Prabhu. Hi, Krishna. Any other Prabhu comments or questions? 
Yes, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. If nobody has any questions, can we end the call here? Hare Krishna, Prabhupada, Dhanakshana, Mantra, Ishto, Shla, Prabhupada, and Guru Maharaj. Uh, thank you so much, Prabhupada. Uh, Prabhupada, I have a question that's very nice class. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, Prabhupada, actually, you are uh, mentioning so many things in uh, class, means how we have desires. We so should not have any desire while it's doing activities of devotional service. Even though we may feel in that mood, but it's very difficult to always be in the uh, that mood, you know, we don't want Krishna, but in Krishna test or Krishna, if something happens, we have, we will be very much, uh, if you want some uh, better situation or like that, you know. How we can improve um, the situation? I'm not sure if I fully heard you, but I, you know, I, it's, what I understood is that it is very difficult to, you know, come to the stage of loving only Krishna because we have so much of you know, difficulties and attachments. So, how to develop that? Is that the question? Yes, yes, Prabhu. Yeah. <laughs> um, I used to always, um, you know, think when I first, first came to Krishna consciousness, uh, I mean, I'm talking about uh, uh, 1987 or 1986, 87, I think, when I was uh, in Krishna consciousness, first time I came, 87, 89, whatever. whatever. So at that time, when we used to see so many devotees uh, speaking about Krishna, talking about Krishna, giving the references about their various various literatures, quoting verses, I used to get amazed, I used to get surprised, I used to be, uh, you know, uh, very much inspired, and I used to also long that how can I also develop, how such a thing Will that be possible ever in, in my life? I will also be able to speak about Krishna to some forum. I will also be able to... And this is not to boast of what I was just trying to refer. How, what was highly impossible, improbable, highly you know, non-comprehendable, uh, at least to an extent Krishna has facilitated to you know, give us his service to speak about Krishna. So, within the period of routine 20... So 30 years, whatever that is, some progress has been made to love or, you know, some something come closer to Krishna. It is because of the mercy of Vaishnavas and those with whom we confess and try to learn about our difficulties and how to get rid of them. So if at all we are determined that I need to love Krishna and if we try to work for it, we definitely, because it is not in this game, it is not only we are alone there. Krishna is going to reciprocate. Krishna is waiting there exactly the way we are interested in Krishna. Krishna is probably interested more than the way we are interested. So from that perspective, all we need to do is just, just have a burning desire to love Krishna and probably look at various devotees and take inspiration how they are loving Krishna. Look at various devotees and try to learn from them how they are managing to be focused in Krishna consciousness. Well, then we look at various other things and finding faults because of our conditioning. Let's also condition ourselves, take an extra mile, do an austerity to look at how people have developed love for Krishna. Some of, some of you must have gone to Sadi Sangha, uh, you know, retreat. There are so many events, there are so many things that are happening. Where Krishna and Krishna's devotees are expressing their love for each other, and these are all our these are all our experience to see that yes, if I work on this process, I can come to the stage also. Krishna is giving you live examples. So, bottom line is develop a very strong desire, and if this desire is eating up a, eating up your head, because we as human beings we can handle things that are Top desires in, our, in ourselves. Whatever is our top five things on top of our head, we work and we give priority to that. Our list may be 25, 30, but the top five, three things, we constantly keep thinking about it and working about it. Child, family, health, job. So if loving Krishna is in that list, then I'm sure 
with the help of uh, uh, devotees association with the help of our burning desire and with the help of krishna's reciprocation we will definitely get there if every one of us drop a right in teachings of lord kapila that please understand this krishna consciousness process works if you wanted to know you please look at the face of our devotees you see them before coming to krishna consciousness you see their face after they came to krishna consciousness there is a transformation there is a transformation that has happened already which yourself can prove i mean you can get proof of it so if we do that you me everybody analyze what we were before coming to krishna consciousness and what we are and i am sure if we be little set fast early remain focused in this process the day will come when we look back oh my god i had so many desires from krishna i never thought that just love krishna is so interesting so loving so inspiring and so enthusiastic so maybe a day will come that we will feel like that and this process will definitely take us forward and that's why my second reflection and third reflection was get rid of selfishness from us get rid of sharing from a relative source and try to see holy name vaishnavas bhagavatam deities and holy dham as an opportunity to love krishna so love devotees love holy dham love bhagavatam love deities I mean, so slowly you will definitely make it to the spiritual world and come to the stage of prema and then yes yes prabhu thank you so much for a very very inspiring class and all the devotees thank you so much prabhu is there and only hope is uh, devotee thank you so much are are you sure anybody else has any other questions or comments okay thank you so much Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita Jai, Shri Lopa Bhakti Jai. Bhagwan 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 Sh